I'm Haley. I'm Cole. And I'm Katie. And welcome to the, the Couch, Couch Potato, Potato Lab. Lab, where we bring the science to your home. Make sure that if you want to follow along with us to download your lab manual at bit.ly slash couchpotatolab. Make sure to text in your questions at 306-570-1013. And you can find us on all of our social media at Eyes Youth. We have Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, all Instagram, all of those there, and that is at Eyes Youth. And if you're going to use those platforms, make sure to use the hashtag Couch Potato Lab to get a hold of us there. We have a really fun episode planned for you all today, and we can't wait to get started because we are exploding with excitement. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> we sure are. We sure are. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Cole. My pronouns are he and him, and um, I'm very excited about today's episode. Like Haley said, we are going to be exploding um, with excitement and with fun today. And I actually, a fun fact about me is I actually do a pretty good impression of a volcano. Oh, well, if you do, I think we should see it, Cole. Okay, I mean, I guess so. Here we go. Here is my impression of a volcano. Oh. <laughs> wow. So I've been working on that for years. I studied at um, all of the, 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 the best schools out there. <laughs> And uh, cool, this you is what I've come up with. You really disappeared into a volcano. Like I, I did. You, you did. I did. Yeah. I know. I Truly. know. It's amazing. That's me. That's me. That was great. Thank you so much, Cole. You always seem to make me smile with those oh. volcano impressions. Anytime. Yes. Anytime. You're, you've really studied so hard to get there. So thank you. But who is my scientist to the right? Hello. My name is Katie. And my pronouns are she, her. And a fun fact about me is that when I was a baby, I dropped a can on my toe and I had to go to the hospital. Now I don't know why volcanoes reminded me of that, <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's my fun fact for today. And uh, it w thankfully it wasn't broken, but uh, I did scream a lot because I was a baby. And that's my fun <laughs> fact. <laughs> that is super fun. And that is a super fun story. Who is it? Thank you, Cole. Who is our host for today? Yes, I'm dying to know. Oh my goodness. Well, 
I'm glad to meet you both today. First time seeing you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And my name is Haley. My pronouns are she and her. And a fun fact about me. Katie, you got me thinking about breaking bones and mm -hmm. hurting ourselves. Right. <laughs> so my fun fact, I suppose, would be when I was in grade 10, I um, tore ligaments in my ankle. And the fun thing about that was I didn't have to participate in gym class for the whole semester. Oh. <laughs> so How fun. Yeah, that, that mm -hmm. is a lot of fun. That is super mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. Super, yes. super fun. But before we get started with the episode, we did want to take a moment to recognize that we are on Treaty 4 land, which is the traditional territory of the Neowak, Nakaway, Dakota, Nakota, and Lakota peoples, as well as the traditional homeland of the Métis Michif Nation. So we also uh, ask you to recognize if you are coming and watching from other numbered treaties or from unceded territory, and we want to thank you for taking a moment to recognize this with us. Thank you so much, Katie. I have something to surprise both of you. Oh, okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. You're ready? You're ready? It's a volcano! Oh, that's... Oh. That's cool. That's, yeah, that's that's okay, I oh, guess. Okay. That's looks all right. I mean, I want to see it in action, though. I, I was think. just going to say, you need to see it in action before you really judge it. Wait, but Haley, is this... Because I know that you have a big science fair coming up. Yes. Is this your, like, final ready project for this big science fair that's coming up? Yes, I forgot the whole bulletin board at home, but this essentially is the project. Okay. I'm going to be presenting it and I want to win. Like, I don't know yeah, about either I mean, of you, of but course. I love winning. I'm so competitive. Yeah, how mm, about definitely. Haley, you give uh, Cole and I a chance to look at it and then we'll see what we think about that it. That is a good idea. Yeah, so <laughs> Katie and I are real volcano experts. We'll know that if, if this is like a winning science fair project, if you just give us a little short little demo here. Okay. Yeah. So this is called a baking soda and vinegar volcano. So I'm going to go ahead and put the baking soda in. And we are going to scoop it in here into my volcano. Get it all ready. Spill it down the sides. It's not a refined process just yet. All right. I've got my baking soda in there. Now some vinegar. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. Mm -hmm. I, I'm watching. All right. Oh, oh, okay. It's uh, coming. That's it's, going. it's working for sure. Mm -hmm. Maybe give it another splash, Haley. Is there anything else going on in there? A Whoa. little bit more. Okay. I, I mean. So how impressed are you? That's awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, <laughs> Haley, I I hate to break it to you, but that's old, girl. <laughs> Everybody knows how that works, and uh, simple acids and bases. We've been through that. I don't know. I I I just don't think that's really like a winning science fair experiment. What do you think, Cole? Uh, no. Um. I, I'm going to echo what Katie said and said, and that's old girl. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. That's old because that is just, I'm so, it's, it's not uh well, you don't have to get upset. I wait, Haley. Um, what? Listen, we what? didn't mean to, we didn't mean to upset you. Yeah. What if instead of using this, Katie and I maybe work together. We talked to you a little bit more about how volcanoes really work. And then we can see if we can build a even better volcano. How does that sound? Yeah, we can really kind of vamp up your projects. Mm -hmm. We're going to make sure that you win by the end of this episode because we're going to go ahead and dive into what volcanoes are and we're going to do a few other experiments and give you some ideas for what you can do. Okay, I like the sound of that. Perfect. Okay, okay well, Haley, before we get started into volcanoes, you need to actually know a little bit more about how volcanoes are formed. And before we even talk about how volcanoes are formed, we have to talk about the thing that volcanoes are on, which is the Earth. And I actually have here, I baked this myself. Uh, this right here is a cake version of the Earth. Would you look at that? It's beautiful. You can see all that beautiful blue uh, ocean water and the green of the land. And I even have the, the Arctic up there too. Uh, very, very good stuff. Well, um, not only are cakes delicious, but they can also be used to demonstrate a lot of cool science things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a slice of my cake here. And while I'm doing that, I think Katie is getting something ready over there. You got the board ready, mm -hmm. Katie? Yep, for sure. Excellent. So if we want to take a look over here, uh, I drew a diagram of the layers of the Earth. So uh, this is going to be our Earth. And then you can see here, I kind of like cut out a, s a chunk of the Earth. And this is what we're going to be looking at today. Because believe it or not, the Earth is not just like one kind of big clump of whatever. There's different layers to it. And that's why uh, it's important to understand how volcanoes work with that so I think Cole's ready with his cake now that's right so I took a nice little slice of my cake off here and what you'll notice is that it has this beautiful pattern look at this 
Look at this beautiful wow. pattern. Now, the reason that I made the cake like this is because our cake is not, or sorry, our cake, <laughs> our Earth is not just like one solid ball of rock, which some like an asteroid or something floating through space. There's actually a lot of different layers to the Earth. And the first one that we're going to talk about is represented by this thin layer of icing right here. So the thin layer of icing that uh, you can see that where the green is, that is called the, the Earth's crust. The Earth's crust. So Katie, what is the Earth's crust? Mm -hmm, exactly. So this is going to be our thinnest layer and it's the one that we're probably most familiar with. So right here, this kind of blue layer here is going to be our crust and our crust is 22 degrees Celsius. So the crust is divided into two main sections, being oceanic crust and continental crust. So continental crust is any of our land and oceanic crust is where our oceans and our bodies of water are. So again, it's our thinnest layer and it's completely solid. So that's our first layer, Cole. That's right. So we start with the crust, which like Katie said, the thinnest layer. That's why I chose to use this nice thin layer of icing for um, the crust, because you can see all of the other layers of cake are much thicker. Now, I didn't actually do it to scale. If I did, then there would be different. They are kind of all the same on the inside. But the point that I was trying to get across is that the icing is supposed to be really, really thin. The crust is really, really thin and everything else gets thicker from there. So underneath, directly underneath the Earth's crust, this sort of pink red layer right here that on camera, I realize looks like looks like a hamburger that hasn't been cooked yet. Um, <laughs> but it's I, pr I promise you it's not. But this layer is actually part of what we call the mantle. OK, and because it is um, upper, then this layer, it's higher, we call it the upper mantle. So mm -hmm. Katie, what's the upper mantle? Yes, so our upper mantle on our diagram is going to be this layer here right underneath the crust. So upper mantle. And one of the coolest things about the layers of the earth is that it gets hotter the deeper we go into the earth. So this is actually going to be 1400 degrees Celsius to 3000 thousand degrees Celsius. Now look at that huge change. We went from 22 degrees Celsius to 1400 just in one layer. So we're going to see exactly how much hotter it's going to be as we go uh, into our core of our earth. But for this one, the upper mantle is really cool because it's actually a mixture of both solid and liquid. So uh, it's liquid kind of flowing on top and solid and it can kind of change states depending on the heat and the pressure in that area. But that is one of the coolest things about the upper mantle coal. That's right. So the upper mantle is directly below that crust. And Katie, uh, it was so interesting to see the temperature difference between the crust and the upper mantle. I can't imagine the types of temperatures we're going to get to when we get further down. But right underneath the upper mantle, our ground beef right here, is this sort of light orange or brown and these two layers we consider them to be both part of like the larger group of the mantle but if this was the upper mantle Haley I'm gonna ask you okay. what would you guess the next one's called if they're both part of the mantle this one's upper what's what's the one below it called hmm, probably the lower mantle yes that is correct the lower mantle so Katie why don't you tell us a little bit about the lower mantle mm -hmm. okay so our next layer here lower mantle I'm going to label this and it is going to be at 3,000 degrees Celsius lower mantle all right, so this is another cool layer, and it's because uh, this layer is a solid. So just like our crust is a solid, this layer is a solid. It's not a liquid like the upper mantle, but uh, it's actually a solid because of all that pressure coming down. So we can imagine, of course, all of these layers are pushing down on it here. So all of this pressure is making this a solid uh, layer, but it is so hot that can it also melt into liquid if it's kind of needed. So again, it deals with that pressure, but most of the time it's in a solid state and it's at that 3000 degrees Celsius mark. Very interesting. So we're getting deeper and deeper into the earth and deeper and deeper into this cake. And I want to be getting into this cake pretty soon here. <gasps> and so Cole, I have a guess as to what the next one's called. Oh, you do? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, um, go ahead, Haley, if you have a guess, go ahead. Well, if the first one's called the upper mantle, mm -hmm. the next one's called the lower mantle. Yes. This is obviously the lowest mantle. Ah, uh, yes, the lowest mantle. No, not quite, Haley. That's a very, very good guess. But actually, the next two layers, just like how we grouped these two layers of the mantle together, we're also uh, grouping these two layers, and these are called the core. Okay, so the first um, layer that we have in yellow is what we call the outer core. So, Katie, what is the outer core? Mm-hmm. 
All right, so now we're here. We are at this pink section here. I'm going to draw my arrow, and this is our outer core. And we're going to be even hotter in this layer. It is going to be 4,000 to 6,000 degrees Celsius. That's pretty hot, Katie. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we're going to see that the one last layer is even going to be hotter than that. But this is all very important. Uh, and this is, I would say, almost one of the most important layers because this layer is actually what gives us our magnetic field. Now, what is the magnetic field? If you're ever out lost in the woods, one helpful thing that would be uh, to have would be a compass because you would be able to tell which way is north, south, are we supposed to go this way, this way, this way, whatever it is. And this layer is actually what gives Earth its magnetic field, which allows us to tell if we're pointing north, south, east, or west. So that's uh, the uh, outer core. Excellent. So we only actually have one more layer of our Earth to talk about, and that is the very, very bottom of this lovely cake that I made. So again, these two are grouped together as the core. We have the outer core in yellow, and this bottom sort of white piece is the inner core. Mm -hmm. So this inner core is marked in yellow here, and I will just write this here. Now this is our hottest layer so far. It is going to be resting at 6,000 degrees Celsius. So that is, of course, our hottest. Uh, but that kind of makes the most sense. Essentially what the inner core is, is a big hot ball of metal, and it's going to be a solid. So that's kind of what holds the Earth all together. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So not only is are the layers of the the earth very very interesting but they're also <laughs> very delicious that's great cool i hope you're willing to share at the no. end of the, at the end of the show <laughs> no, it's the cake is all for me oh cold that's a lot of cake well i guess you know what you guys are such good friends i will give you a slice of cake later on good that is good. Now, I think I'm going to call you both liars right now because you told me you were going to tell me how to make a volcano. And all I learned about was the Earth's crust. Now, listen, Haley, I know. We, we, we have to start somewhere, though. And this is, I promise you, this will all come together. This will all make a full picture. But we have to talk about the layers of the Earth because it's the motion of the layers of the Earth that end up leading to volcanoes later on. So there's something called tectonic plates. And we're going to talk about tectonic plates. Katie, would you like to start describing what a tectonic plate is and maybe how they work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. So the first layer that we talked about was the Earth's crust. Now this crust uh, kind of fits together like little jigsaw pieces. So uh, if we kind of look at like what a shell would look like, it's easy to kind of crack. Same with tectonic plates, which is the Earth's crust. Now these fit together like little puzzle pieces, but sometimes these little pieces kind of like uh, kind of spur apart from each other. And that's why we have different land masses on the Earth that are separated from uh, from bodies of water. What do you think about that, Haley? Whoa, I actually never knew that, but I'm, I'm having a hard time picturing it. So if you're like me and you're at home and you have a lot of questions, feel free to text in at 306-570-1013 and catch us on our social medias at EyesYouth and make sure to use the hashtag CouchPotatoLab to send us all of your wonderful questions. We want to answer them here in the Couch Potato Lab. So yes, Katie, I'm having trouble picturing it. I'm not really sure what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I was thinking. So I actually brought a visual here. We're going to do a little bit of an activity to look at exactly what these tectonic plates are. Now, beneath the Earth's crust is what we have uh, the mantle, and that's what Cole and I went over. Now, the mantle can be a liquid, and sometimes when this uh, liquid is heated enough, because if it's a solid, it's a little bit colder. If it's heated enough, it'll turn into a liquid, and that's what is able to move the Earth's crust around and able to break apart the te uh, tectonic plates or kind of smush them together. So I have a little visual uh, with some toothpaste and with some crackers here. You can follow along at home. Uh, you uh, can use any variation if you have ice you can use that graham crackers regular crackers but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to model some of the different movement of tectonic plates because there's different patterns that the tectonic plates go in that will change where the land masses are fitting on earth so let's take a look here I'm going to put down two crackers that are going to act like my tectonic plates wow this is very <laughs> squishy toothpaste I can't believe how much that looks like ketchup yeah <laughs> yeah it's crazy cinnamon toothpaste everybody 
All right, so the first uh, tectonic plate that we're going to look at is called the uh, transform tectonic plate. And this is when two tec tectonic plates move past each other. So they kind of like kind of grind up and then they just kind of go on their way. So it's like a little bit of a bump in bumper cars. So let's go take a look. So if I was modeling this transform tectonic plate movement, it's just kind of like this. You can see that they're kind of brushing up against each other. There's a little bit of pressure as I'm doing this, but then they keep going on their way and everything's good. So they don't stay together. So that's the first kind of tectonic plate movement. There's another one that is called divergent tectonic plate movement. Now this one is kind of the opposite, I would say, because these tectonic plates are going to be moving away from each other. So obviously here, uh, we're in North America, we're far away from many uh, of the other continents, and that's what happened. There is divergent tectonic plate movement. So let's go ahead and model this. So if two tectonic plates started out uh, really close together, and then they just kind of pulled away from each other. Hmm. That would be what the divergent tectonic plate looked like. So, uh, Haley, I have a question for you. So, we have divergent mm -hmm. tectonic plate movement, and there's one more main tectonic plate movement. So, if I, I have a divergent one, what do you think another movement might be called? Well, as the book and movie series Divergent tells me, <laughs> the next one is Insurgent. Ooh, Ooh, that's a good guess. Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to, again, go with lower divergent, like you ch guessed on the last one. But mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it's insurgent, Katie, is it? No, no, not quite. But you were pretty close, Haley. It's actually called convergent Ooh. because we know that diverging is moving apart. Now, converging is coming together. So let's go ahead and take a look if I move these crackers closer together. When I do this, they're going to touch. But now, here's my question. What's going to happen? Are they going to just kind of move away again? Are they going to just sit here? Uh, actually, neither of those are going to happen. So there's two kind of main situations. One of them is that it's going to form a mountain range. And this is what happens. I just have a little uh, bowl of water here. I'm just going to quickly dip this cracker into this bowl of water. And what we're going to do is we're going to model what a uh, mountain would look like. So mountains happen with when two tectonic plates kind of push up on one another and you can imagine, uh, as my cracker is soaking there, you can imagine if these are tectonic plates, mountains form when they push up against each other forming that peak of a mountain. So if I have my cracker here, there we go, and then we're going to form a uh, convergent tectonic plate and I want to see what a mountain looks like, it kind of goes like this. And you oh. can see that kind what? of forming up as it pushes together those tectonic plates. And of course, a lot of heat and pressure is used when we're looking at that. Okay, well, that's cool, but that's only one situation. I'm going to rest this one off to the side here. Now, let's take a look uh, at the other situation. And this is the one that is going to excite Haley the most because this deals with volcanoes. Ooh. So we're going to look at the subduction zone, which happens when a more dense tectonic plate, so kind of like a, a thicker and a heavier tectonic plate, goes below a less dense tectonic plate. So if we do this, and we're going to model one more time. I'll move this one out of the way. So... Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at this subduction zone. So if we push together, there's actually going to be one that is going to rise up. Just like that. I'll kind of move this out of the Ooh, way. Wow. I'm just looking at your fingers, Katie. They look oh, very <laughs> gelatinous. <laughs> they are, they're going to be nice and sparkly clean. But you can see that there's one that actually kind of rises up. And you can even see I'm getting kind of some of this toothpaste in there too. And this is how volcanoes form when one uh, tectonic plate goes in front of the other. So that was my kind of model. But you know, I'm uh, definitely more of like a cookies, Oreo kind of girl. And I thought that Cole could help me explain uh, those kind of three tectonic plate movements with Oreos. That's right, Katie. I can. I can help you out. Now, I know you are more of an Oreo gal, so I brought some Oreos along, and I'm going to show basically the same thing that Katie was showing, just in a little bit of a different way. And you can, again, try this at home if you have a cookie similar to this, like an Oreo or something like that, that has two cookies and um, uh, icing in the middle. You can start by just twisting and being very careful and opening it up like so, so that you have, and I didn't do it very good, but you want to have to have most of the icing on one side. Now, whatever um, side of the cookie doesn't have a lot of the icing, you're going to take that and just break that into two 
pieces, okay? Try to be as equal as you can, but if not, that's okay too. So what we're going to do here is we are going to model those three different modes of the tectonic um, plate shifting, the convergent, the divergent, and the transform. And again, this is just another way to see what's happening. And another thing that's cool about using the Oreos is we can see with them what actually really happens to the, uh, below the surface of the Earth. So with Katie's demonstration, we saw a lot of what's happening with the crust. Uh, this will show a little bit more of what's going on below. So let's say that we have our two um, tectonic plates like this, and they are separated. There's a little bit of a fault in between them. Um, if we look at convergent first, remember converging means to come together. So with a convergent tectonic plate movement, these two Oreo cookie pieces are going to come together and press against each other. Okay. Now, you can't really see that. Uh, maybe you can a little bit, but I started having some, some of that lifting that Katie was showing us towards the end there. So maybe I made a volcano or a mountain or something like that. All right. But there, again, pushing those two tectonic plates, that's converging. Okay. Let's do another one. I have another one prepared here of a Oreo. I'm going to now do uh, diverging. So now with diverging, if I pull those two tectonic plates apart, you can see I widen that gap. And again, that's going to expose a lot of the stuff that's underneath um, to areas where it's not normally supposed to be. So that was our convergent and our divergent. Haley, do you remember what the last one was? I'm testing your memory. Oh my goodness. Convergent, divergent. You uh, can do it. I can do it. Just put my brain to it. It Ooh. starts with a T. It starts with a T. Tectonic? Very, very close. It is actually transform. Transform. So remember, converging was coming together, diverging, going apart. And transform is sort of when they slide against each other. Now, you sometimes when you do this, you can see with the icing, it's going to start to kind of move out the sides. You can notice that it's like pushing out the sides of the cookie like this. And again, so you see some a little bit of icing coming out the side there. And that's because those two tectonic plates are rubbing against each other and m sort of m moving everything inside the Earth under the Earth's surface around. So again, another way that we can uh, visualize tectonic plates, you can use the graham crackers and the toothpaste or the icing, or you can use Oreo cookies as well. Well, thank you very much, Cole. So while you were both busy doing that, I had to run to the bathroom. And Katie, you left your toothpaste on the sink oh shoot with the cap off you know what Haley? i could say that was an accident but i did that on purpose because i have a cool little demonstration that i want you to do but first i need to explain what the difference is between uh, magma and lava now i know that we've probably all heard of these things before but we might use them interchangeably which is not the case so we have a little graphic here we're going to pull up and we're going to look at the difference between magma and lava so when we're looking at molten rock, that is something that can be kind of a solid or a liquid. But when it's molten rock, it's melted so that it's more of a liquid. Both magma and lava are molten rock. But the only difference is where this molten rock is. So if the molten rock is below the surface of the earth, it's called magma. If this molten rock is above the surface of the earth it's called lava and you can see in our diagram there the magma uh, is pointing to what is below the surface of the earth and the lava is above so those are some very important distinctions now Haley I wanted you to model kind of how magma works and how it can push through the layers of the uh, dirt and our first layer of the earth to uh, kind of spew up as lava so I give you these supplies and I want you to go ahead and show me how we can model magma Okay, that sounds good. And good thing our toothpaste just so happens to be red, just like lava. So you will just need an old tube of toothpaste that has a little bit left in it, an old container that you can cut some a hole in the bottom of, and some dirt. So I'm going to start off by putting my toothpaste right into the hole of my container, just like this. So it's wearing a little a little hat of some <laughs> sort. <laughs> Thank you, Cole. Yeah, I like that. Yes, and because we wanted to be pushing up through the dirt, we're just going to fill this with some dirt. And now I completely forgot to grab a spoon of any sort, so I'll be going with my hands. That's okay. Thank you for the reassurance. And I'm just going to bury it until I can't even see it anymore. Perfect. So I have my tube of toothpaste on the bottom. That's kind of like the volcano. And then this on top, which is the volcano that you might see in your everyday life. And so if Katie is telling me correctly, I should be able to squeeze this container 
and or this um toothpaste container and it should be coming up through the dirt is that correct katie mm -hmm, exactly and that's exactly how magma works so as the magma uh there's pressure it comes out and then it's going to kind of spew out as lava okay so i'm gonna give this a try then okay all righty we'll see if anything comes up through this dirt hmm Keep squeezing, Haley. Keep you can do squeezing. it. Oh, I thought I saw some movement there. Oh. A little bit, maybe. I see movement. I see movement as well. I'm not sure if it has enough power to come up through the dirt. I'm trying. Oh, maybe I can roll. Yeah, the there you go. There we go. Now we're on the right track. Remember, there's lots of pressure, so you got to apply lots of pressure to get really, that really magma push. out. Okay. If you want this, if you want to win the science fair. Yeah. You gotta work for it. I know. <laughs> Physically and mentally. <laughs> yes. I think we're just about at the end of our. <laughs> I would be curious to maybe if you took a little bit, skim a little bit of that dirt off the yeah, top. Yeah, because it's it's looking like it's pretty close. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. So if I skim a little off the top, <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be in there somewhere. <laughs> I mean, it had to have gone somewhere, right? Yeah, I'm not sure where it went. Keep digging. Keep We're oh, going to here we there go. There wow. we go. So it's buried in here. I just had too much of my mantle or my crust. Oh, the dirt. Yes, 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 the dirt. Of course, yes, um, yes. And so my volcano was not close enough to the top, but I can feel it. It's definitely on my fingers. Yes, we can see the dirt normally wouldn't stick to your fingers like that. So that must be some sort of yes. magma situation going on in there. And that shows too, if it's a bigger volcano, that there's going to be uh, needing more pressure mm -hmm. on that magma to erupt as lava. Versus if it's a smaller volcano, then we need less pressure. But you know, uh, that was really great, Haley, of you to kind of model magma. But lava is also a very important concept, and it affects many, many people around the world, especially if they live near a, vo of, uh, a volcano and they're scared of an eruption. So Cole, I think that you have a little bit of a demonstration to show what lava looks like. I do. That's right. So um, lava and magma like Katie explained, are similar to one another, but they do have some important differences. Now, we're going to be able to make um, a demonstration that flows like lava would. It behaves a, a lot like liquid lava would. And you can do this at home. We're going to make a, uh, a lava lamp, our very own lava lamp. Now, you might have seen um, a lava lamp. Maybe your parents have lava lamps in their dens from back from the, the 70s or something like that. Um, but lava lamps are actually really, really cool. Now, inside an actual lava lamp that you might buy from the store, there isn't actual lava, of course. But it looks like lava the way that things flow and bubble up and stuff. So we're going to recreate this. So the first thing you need is some sort of jar, a container. Uh, preferably, you want it to be uh, see-through so that you can actually see what you're doing. So I've got a nice little mason jar here. And the next thing you're going to want to grab is some sort of oil. I'm using canola oil, but honestly, any kind of oil works. And you'll see why in a second, because we're going to be using the fact that oil has a different density than water to actually do this experiment. So you can use canola oil. I've used baby oil in the past as well. Sometimes baby oil is even better because it's the same color or lack of color as water. So you don't get that yellow color, but canola oil works just fine. So what you want to do is start off by pouring about a cup or depending on the size of your container, you want about half of it to be full with oil. So I'm going to pour some oil in here until I get to about half. That's good enough, more than enough. And that should be just dandy. Excellent. So our oil is in. The next thing that we're going to do is add in water. All right. So I just got some regular old water. And now this is really, really cool. This isn't the actual full experiment, but watch what happens when I pour the water in. What do you notice as I'm putting the water in there? So I'm going to start pouring the water in slowly. Whoa, it looks like there's bubbles in there. Yeah, Haley, do you kind of see something strange going on there? Or something, like what do you see? Describe to me what you see there, Haley. Well, it's kind of odd because I would think that the two liquids, the oil and the water, would mix together mm -hmm. and become one. But it almost looks like the water is at the bottom now. Yes. So there's a lot of different cool reasons why this is happening. We see almost two layers forming inside of our jar. On the top, we have our yellow layer full of the canola oil. And on the bottom, we have our clear or transparent layer full of the water. Now, part of the reason that this happens is because these two liquids have different densities. All right. So the more dense the liquid, the it's going to the more dense liquid is going to go to the bottom of the container. So we can see that water is more dense than the oil in this case. So it's going to scoot underneath. And also water and oil, it's you might have heard the saying that like water and oil don't mix. It's kind of like two opposite personalities not mixing. 
It's the same sort of thing that's going on here. There's special chemical properties of both water and oil that you can't really mix them together. So they separate out into these nice little layers. Awesome. Okay. So the next step is we're going to add, because I like a little bit of fun, a little bit of color, we're going to add some food coloring to our lava lamp. I have some red food coloring here, but you can add as much as you want. You'll also notice that the food coloring, at least for a little bit, is going to sort of sit at the top of our um, of our jar, but you can notice it now already, it's starting to fall, okay? So and eventually it's going to start mixing with the water layer, all right? So I put a few drops in there and it might not mix for a little bit, but that's okay. Okay, the very, very final and uh, last step, final and last. Two words that mean the exact same thing. So the last step to actually get this lava lamp bubbling, to get things going, is we are going to add a antacid tablet like Alka-Seltzer, all right? Now what this does, if you've ever used one of these, if you have like a sore stomach or something like that, you normally take one of these, you drop it in water, and it starts to fizz. It releases a lot of gas. So what's going to happen is, well, actually, Haley, I'm going to ask you, what do you think is going to happen? I'm going to drop these chunks of Alka-Seltzer tablet in there. What do you think is going to happen when the Alka-Seltzer eventually reaches the water layer at the bottom? Mm, so you're saying that water is heavier than oil, correct? Mm, mm. So can you tell me about how much do those pills weigh? <laughs> how much this weighs? Yeah. I <laughs> you are swole cool after all. Uh, let me just test it out here for a second. <laughs> Usually I'm lifting things much heavier than this. Maybe but we can do a compare. Would you say that that is heavier <laughs> than water? I, I'm going to tell you that it's going to sink all the way to the bottom. Oh, yeah, so obviously I can it is pretty heavy. <laughs> it's super heavy. We couldn't tell because your muscles are just so used to That's right. bigger weights. Basically everything that I lift looks really, really light because uh, I, I am uh, only short of Superman in my, in my <laughs> strength. Uh, but, but Haley, what do you think is going to happen when it hits the water? <laughs> oh, when it yes. hits the water? Yes, yes. Hmm. Okay, so it's going to sink to the bottom. Yes. It's heavy. <laughs> yep, it is. <laughs> and it might just chill there. It might just chill there. Well, we are about to find out. Okay, so we're watching very carefully our lava lamp here. I'm going to drop in these tablets. Now, what you want to do is if you're trying this at home, you want to break up your tablet into smaller pieces and don't put them all in at the same time because then uh, if you save them, you're going to be able to use your lava lamp for a lot longer. So I'm just going to start with one or two pieces. So there's one, there's two. And what we should see is you should see a little bit of bubbling going on and our food coloring is starting to mix and we're going to keep bubbling and now you can see we've got these cool red bubbles starting to flow up through the oil just like <gasps> a lava lamp Whoa, would. Whoa, cool, that's yeah. so cool. Pretty, pretty cool. So again, what's happening there is these antacid tablets are releasing a whole bunch of gas. That gas is getting trapped inside of a water bubble and those water bubbles naturally want to rise to the surface and when they rise they enter the oil layer and they stay completely intact. Remember, water and oil aren't going to mix, so it's going to stay as a bubble until we reach the bottom again. And I can add more pieces in there, and we can really get the party started in here. There you go. Wow. So that is a little demonstration of lava and how lava moves around. That was so cool, Thank Cole. You. Thank you for finally showing me some lava experiments. Make sure to text in your questions at 306-570-1013 uh, and catch us on all of our social media platforms in order to ask us so many questions. That is at Eyes Youth on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And use the hashtag Couch Potato Lab while you're at it so that you can get a hold of us all the time with all of your questions. Now, I have something so cool to show both Katie and Cole. I've been working on it all morning and it is actually kind of funny. It's on my computer screen. So we're just going to take a look at my computer screen and Cole, tell me what you see. Okay. Oh, <gasps> oh, I know what this is. Haley, this is my all-time favorite game, Minecraft. <gasps> is that you how you say it? Minecraft? Um, uh, it's more mine, oh, like you're right, mining. Oh, right, because you mine. I, all I do is I walk around and try to get the cows to talk to me. <laughs> oh, of but course. But usually I haven't been very successful. That's okay. So I've worked all morning on my Minecraft, and I built a wonderful volcano. It was, I'd say, at least 15 to 20 feet high in my Minecraft world. And while the show was happening, while everyone was showing me all of these super amazing volcano experiments, my volcano I made on here actually exploded on itself. This was my first time making a volcano, and although I asked my friends for some help, they did not tell me that if I let it sit there, that it would explode like this. So I'm a little sad, 
but we can actually go in and see that this here is the lava in here. Oh, and we can even see it takes off. Sometimes it spews, just like a real volcano would. So I want you all at home and Katie and Cole to your, use your imaginations to build up a wall around it and picture all this lava inside. We would have to go so high in the sky to be able to see it and we could look down on it and we could even make it erupt. But today, unfortunately, that is not an option and it is beginning to rain in my Minecraft world. That is super awesome. So I am, even though my volcano didn't really work today, I'm still super proud of the volcano I was able to show Cole and Katie and I think I'm starting to finally understand this volcano thing that's going on because I have what what do I have that I, is in my tool belt now I have the layers of the earth so I know that there is the upper mantle the lower mantle the upper core and the outer core yeah, you know, uh, Haley, you're yeah. you're getting the hang of things, and you know, I I did want to introduce a new concept to you, and uh, this is kind of interesting because not all volcanoes are on land. We have something called underwater volcanoes, and yes, I didn't even know that was a real thing until we did this episode. But these underwater volcanoes are also called submarine uh, volcanoes, and so these are some really cool uh, volcanoes. And basically, what they are, it happens when there are tectonic plates that diverge. So remember that that movement where these two tectonic plates move away from each other. What happens when that occurs is we get something called an ocean vent. So these ocean vents, when uh, they move apart, we have kind of uh, little holes, you could say, at the bottom of the ocean. And then what happens is magma, remember, that is that molten rock that's below the earth, pushes up through and it's going to explode underwater as lava. Now this lava is a little bit different than the lava we would find uh, above Earth. This lava is actually called pillow lava and it looks a little bit different when this lava is underneath the water versus when this lava is uh, on land. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to make our own submarine volcanoes. So uh, if you want to follow along, this is our main activity for today, then you're just going to need a few supplies mainly like a big uh, kind of beaker of water or any sort of container that uh, is a little bit higher. Then you're going to need a smaller container that has a narrow kind of mouth. So I'm using a test tube here uh, and you can see that it's going to be smaller than this big container. And you need to make sure that the big container is at least about, you know, a few inches bigger than this small one. And then you're going to need some food coloring here and we're going to be making our own submarine volcanoes. How does that sound, Haley? That sounds so cool. I didn't even know there could be volcanoes under the water. Mm -hmm. That's a big surprise. And uh, I got to say, I actually think that volcanoes underneath the water are even cooler than volcanoes on, on the land. So if we want to build our own submarine volcanoes, it's actually a very, very easy process. The first thing, like Katie said, we need a large container. I'm using this picture right here. We need to make sure that our large container is filled with cold water. So if I put my, ooh, that's, that's, <gasps> ooh. that's cold. That's I cold. bet that's cold. So we want it as cold as we possibly can. And you're going to see why in a second, because we want to use a little bit of a temperature difference in order to make this experiment work. So in our large container, we want to make sure we have cold water. Now, I would also recommend, depending on how big your other container is, your small one, um, that you don't up fill this too high. Because if you do, when you put the other container in, it might overflow. So don't fill it all the way up to the brim or anything like that. You just need enough that it's going to cover the small container when you put it inside. So cold water in the big container. Katie, what is our next step? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to be filling our smaller container with hot water. So again, I'm using this test tube. Cole has kind of like a little narrow mouth container, uh, but this has to be hot water. Now, this is very important that this is going to be a temperature difference. Now, uh, this is uh, not exactly how submarine volcanoes work, but for our purposes, we need to make sure we have this temperature difference because it's going to affect the way that the water kind of uh, moves around our volcanoes. So uh, after we have this colored water, Cole, I think it's important that we can kind of see the differences mm -hmm. between the hot and the cold water. So what, what should we add into our hot water? Well, into our hot water, not our cold water. This is really important. We do this in the small container, the hot water um, flask or test tube like Katie is using. We want to add some food coloring. Now, I used red. I think Katie is going to use blue. Mm -hmm. You can use whatever color that you want. But the important thing is, is that you do color this one because otherwise, if you weren't to color this one, you will have no idea what's happening. You won't be able to actually see the underwater volcano working. You won't be able to see the experiment. So you want to add some food coloring of some sort to your small container. Mm -hmm. 
Perfect. Okay, so I think we have everything ready. Mm -hmm. We have our cold water, our hot water, and in the lab manual too, it says that you can add string if you wanted. So if you did have some string at home and you wanted to add it, then what you can go ahead, uh, you can tie it around your smaller container and then you're able to kind of use that string to lower it into the container. But you know, Cole and I are, we're rebels. And yes. uh, we kind of just want to put this smaller container with our bare hands into the cold water. We're going to embrace the, the cold water. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can do it. Okay, we can do it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to slowly lower this in. Now, I when I filled up my hot water, it wasn't quite as hot as I was want. I was trying to get it hot, but it wasn't quite as warm as you want. Oh, another thing, when you do get the hot water, you do have to be careful. You don't want it. You don't need it like boiling or scalding hot that you're going to hurt yourself. You just need it like warm, like warm, warm water. All right. And again, the temperature difference is important. So what's going to happen is, like Katie was explaining, and if you have a string to lower this in, that also works. But if you want to just use your bare hands, what you're going to do is slowly lower the smaller container into the larger container and once the mouth of the smaller container goes underneath the cold water you should see something happening okay so I'm gonna try to lower it in there and rest it at the bottom of the container let's <gasps> see okay I see something happening in there excellent okay so if you look very carefully in there you what you should be able to see is coming out of the small container is some of our red food coloring or red water Whoa. so Haley, do you have any idea why that's happening why is the red water coming out of the small container and not uh, staying inside well i can only think of when you're in a hot tub for a really long time and you get so hot they just need to run out of there so the dye might be getting really really hot so it must be trying to run out that is very, very close. That's kind of the right idea. Again, we talked, Katie talked about the importance of it being a temperature difference. Remember, we have really, really cold water on the outside and really, really warm water on the inside. So that temperature difference is causing the liquids to move. Now, Katie, do you want to try yours? We can see if it works on, on that one as well. Mm -hmm, exactly. I would love to. So I have blue food coloring, like Cole said. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, put mine in here. We'll see if maybe this camera can catch it up too, if that's a better angle. If not, I'll do it here. Okay, so I'm going to lower this and... Whoa, I saw some bubbles. Whoa, dust tube is going. There we go. So we can see that my volcano is doing the same thing as Cole's. And you can see that this top part here, it's, you can see that that color is really coming out now. So this is demonstrating what a submarine volcano actually looks like. The magma is coming off uh, from beneath the earth. It's kind of coming out from the... Uh, submarine volcano and then it's erupting and you can see here that it's kind of forming uh, a layer almost on the surface of this water and that's because when we have hot water hot water rises uh, to the top of water and cold water sinks to the bottom so because we filled our smaller container with hot water that water with the food coloring is going to rise up and the cold water is going to stay at the bottom and that's why our submarine volcanoes work so what do you think about that, Haley? Do you think that, you know, maybe for your science fair, you could do something like this? I think that's a great idea, Katie. I would love to do this as my science experiment. I've never heard of it before. And I bet a lot of the judges there have not heard of these underwater volcanoes either. So I think this would be perfect for my experiment. I think that's a fantastic idea, Haley. This is going to be mind-blowing when you show up to the science fair like this. I've never seen anything like this. This is my first time trying it. And it's so, so cool. It's, it's so much more unique than the regular old baking soda and vinegar volcano. So I definitely think this is the way to go. I think you're right. And make sure to text in your questions about these underwater volcanoes to 306-570-1013. You can also catch us on all of our social medias at Eyes Youth. And that is on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok, as well as make sure to use the hashtag Couch Potato Lab in order to reach us there. Now, there are a few questions that we have come in, so let's find one here. Um, <laughs> I have so Lots many of questions, questions. coming in. So They're flowing in. Yeah. So many. So this one is from Eli. Nice. And Eli asks, is Yellowstone National Park a giant volcano? If it erupts, will what will happen? Do you think that an eruption is possible? 
Well, that is a very, very good question, Eli, and you are on a lot of the right tracks there. Now, you had a big question, so I might have to refer back to HQ here for a second, but you are correct in saying that in Yellowstone National Park, which is in the United States, there is a super volcano underneath the surface there. So if you've ever, I don't know if you've been to Yellowstone National Park, but one of the cool things that you can see there are these different geysers and hot springs and stuff. And there's actually, the reason is, is because there is an active volcano underneath the surface in the National Park. Now you asked if it is going to erupt. Now, eventually, all volcanoes do erupt at some point in time. Now, it's almost impossible to predict the exact time a volcano will erupt, but I do know that scientists have said that the supervolcano at Yellowstone National Park is due for an eruption. Now, when we say something is due for an eruption, that could mean uh, tomorrow, that could mean in the next 100 years, we don't really know. But uh, over time, as time goes on, the likelihood of a volcano erupting gets higher and higher and higher, just because, again, Katie talked about how volcanoes are under an increased amount of pressure, and if the pressure keeps building and building and building, eventually it will be too great to with, uh, withhold inside the Earth and something will happen. Now, you asked, what would happen if the supervolcano at Yellowstone erupted? Well, let me take a quick glance at my message from HQ. Oh my goodness, is the news coming in here? That's right, the news is coming in. I got a ticker that scrolls across my eyes, and I just learned that the last eruption in Yellowstone National Park was 2.1 million years ago million years ago now wow. that's okay i mean obviously it wasn't called yellowstone national park 2.1 million years ago but again those volcanoes they sort of go on cycles they erupt and then they don't erupt for a long 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 time and then they erupt and then they don't erupt and when a volcano erupts lots of things could happen we don't exactly know what would happen if this one erupted but you can imagine that we uh, did some examples of magma and lava there would probably be some magma and lava but there's also something else that comes out of a volcano when it erupts often that is uh, can be super dangerous and that's the ash so the ash that spews out of a volcano that's sort of um, black smoky stuff it can start to block out the sun it can uh, make it really really hard to breathe but we shouldn't be worried because we don't know if the supervolcano at Yellowstone will erupt within our lifetimes or for the next 1,000 years. We just simply can't predict it. Wow, Cole. Mm -hmm. Were you at the explosion 2.5 million years ago? Um, uh, I was, actually. And um, I, I, was, I was fishing inside the <laughs> volcano. And I, some say that that's what caused it. It's because I kept throwing worms in there. <laughs> Thank you, Cole. Um, that actually brings us to our next segment, which is uh, the potato problem. Ooh, the potato problem. Very nice. Ooh, very nice. I'm very a little nice. nervous. I've I never done a potato problem before. Haley, you gotta, you gotta get. You know what? I can't wait any longer. I gotta know what this potato problem is right now. Okay. Well, so this potato problem is the same but different for each of you. So you'll need to turn on your listening ears and get ready to go. Yep. I had my listening ears off this entire time. I haven't he heard a word what you guys are saying. <laughs> oh, great. I'm so glad that they're on now for the finale of the show for the potato problem. So our potato problem today is, well, first, did you know that there are organisms and sometimes even animals that can live inside of a volcano? Oh, cool. Oh, kind of like when Cole was fishing. Yes, yes, yes. Those worms were living for maybe half a second and then they were not. Anymore, <laughs> yes. Yes. So... I'm going to get you to create in this potato problem the perfect organism or animal that lives inside of, on one side, a regular volcano, and then on the other, a submarine volcano. So, Katie, I'm going to give you... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going cool. to give you the regular volcano. You need to design an organism that can survive in a regular volcano. And, Cole, you need to design one that lives in an underwater this volcano. This is a hard potato problem. Of course. And should we draw it? We should draw it, right? Of course. Yeah, <laughs> Of course. Of course. Now, as you're working, I will then present more more issues that arise when you <laughs> think of that. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> this is getting might, more difficult. I like this. Some things that you might not consider. So please start drawing your, your organisms. And now, Katie. Yes. For a volcano, it might live inside of the lava. Okay. It might live just on the rim. Okay. It might live on the top. Okay. And it might breathe air. Oh. Whereas <laughs> coal, on the other hand, yes. does not breathe air because it is underwater. I, f of course. I mean, of yes, of course it doesn't. Of course. I, of course. And what about dealing with the salt content? Ooh, yes. I will definitely add something into my design that uh, deals with the salinity of the ocean um, for this lovely creature. 
Yes. I'm working on that part right now, actually. Oh, perfect. I am so excited to see these creations. They are going to be wonderful. I think we will give them each another minute to finish up their minute? design. Minute? Haley, I just started to draw now. Katie, this is potato problem. I'm oh. sorry. This is how it works. Oh yes. This is how it works. We need a name. We need everything about it. We should it. label it, right? Of like, the, the, you know, different parts of it. If right? you're, If you need it written down or you can just point to it as well. I'm going to label it. I'm a very visual learner here. Oh, perfect. Now, Katie, how is yours coming? Uh, you know, I, I think that Cole better start uh, praying over there that he can uh, beat this wonderful creation. We shall see, Katie. I think I actually have an advantage um, with the submarine volcano uh, because, um, as, as Couch Potato Lab viewers know, I kayak to work every morning. So uh, I am one with the sea. And I know exactly uh, what it takes to survive underwater because when that kayak tips over, trust me, nobody's coming to get me for a long time, and I have to make do under there. So hmm. I know I know what it, I know what it takes. So one might think that Cole is starting to develop um, through natural selection, of course, maybe some gills and uh, and an and an ability to deal with that salt water content. I will. I'll never tell. <laughs> of course, Katie, can you give us a hint? Just a small hint about what might be going on with yours. Uh, my hint is that my guy is on fire. <gasps> Just like I'm on fire oh, with this okay. potato Interesting. problem. Interesting. Hmm. Now this is kind of reminding me of, I don't know if either of you played this growing up or play this right now, uh, Pokemon. Oh, yes. Oh, did I ever. Now this is going to be, I'm going to actually submit this to be the next Pokemon. Oh my goodness. That's how good it is. I bet. Let's go with another 15 seconds. Oh, geez. Okay. So finish up those designs, something that needs to survive in the water and something that needs to survive on the land. <laughs> those would require so many different organs. Also while being inside of a volcano. <laughs> yes. Don't also. forget that part. Yes, the lava is something else as well. So that's a lot. You need to think of different organs. Maybe they have different body parts than us. I can't imagine a human could survive in either of those climates. So we will see what these two creative oh people are um, able to come up with as we okay, I think near the end. How are you doing, Katie? I'm ready. I, I was born ready. I I'm was actually ready this entire time. I was oh, just waiting sure. for, okay, for we'll Cole. See about that. Yeah. We'll see about that. Yeah. Well, I'm so excited to see these potato problems. Who would like to present theirs first? Um, I believe it's tradition that the loser goes first. So, Katie. Oh, that that was rough. I thought you were going to say ladies first. No. Nope. <laughs> yeah, that, that works too. All right. So, I present to everybody Fiery Felicia. And uh, Fiery Felicia is a uh, very important organism because she has a lot of different uh, uh, fiery components that helps her to survive in the volcano. And so Fiery Felicia actually has a special ability to survive in the lava as well as just kind of in the volcano. Because how she does it is she, her hair is composed of fire. <laughs> so you can see some little flames there. Her hair is composed of fire. Uh, she has one eye, no, one eye bigger than the other eye so that she can judge how far away she is from the lava. Uh, her teeth are... Uh, are uh, able to <laughs> what eat. What are they exactly, Katie? <laughs> the, 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 the teeth are <laughs> uh, a special kind of uh, compound uh, that is only found in the fiery Felicia, and the, uh, she's actually able to digest fire, and she's able to, uh, she also has a very small stomach that can deal with the fire I as well. I can see the small stomach compared yeah, and this, to the head. This is, so you can, can see that see fiery before. Felicia's head is uh, massive compared to that her body. That is a massive head. And that's because the head is how she's going to move and direct and eat and all that stuff, and her ears are also uh, little fireworks so that <laughs> if she's ever in trouble, she can kind of uh, erupt her fireworks into the air and then she can uh, get help and she calls out Felicia Felicia <laughs> when she does that <laughs> so uh, that's fiery Felicia and I know that Cole can't can't top that oh no Cole what do you have very interesting well unlike Katie I actually chose uh, I, I thought we were doing a more realist realistic <laughs> approach so I went uh, Cole, this is realistic I'm I not sure what you're saying well we'll see about that after you see Terry here uh, <laughs> I went extremely realistic. <laughs> my friend Ter <laughs> Haley is having a moment. Um, this is Terry, folks, and he lives in an underwater volcano. And I'll explain exactly what all of what we're looking at here. So, um, like 
Haley said, uh, because this is a submarine volcano, obviously we're going to need to um, uh, breathe underwater. So gills, like a fish would have, right there, obviously. Now, also in a submarine volcano, there's lots of activity going on. There's lots of rumbling, bumbling, stumbling, okay? <laughs> and because of there's all of that <laughs> rumbling, um, the, it has large talons that it can use, Terry can use these to grip into the sides of the rock walls of the submarine volcano. Uh, and they're like, they dig into rock so that he can you know, stay attached while the volcano is erupting. He's also wearing a firefighter's hat <laughs> um, <coughs> because he is the uh, fire chief in the local brigade uh, because there is, a, as you can imagine, a lot of, a lot of, I, I, this is the not, f uh, to me, this is not funny. This is purely s scientific, I'm purely so serious. Sorry. Firefighter hat to put out fires um, <coughs> in the in the volcano and a delicious lemon lime soda to keep cool under the intense uh, temperature. So that is Terry. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Cole. I'm crying <laughs> because I'm laughing so hard and I'm actually don't crying. cry. It's okay. I'm actually crying because it's. It's a wonderful design. Thank you. Thank you very much. I love how both of you chose very human-like names. Felicia and yeah, Terry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, of course. Well, obviously. Like, these are realistic. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I have learned so much today about volcanoes, and I plan to actually do an underwater volcano for my science experiment. So we are going to move into our next segment, which is Ask Our Scientists. <laughs> Alrighty, so we are going to jump into these questions because there are so many. So let me just refer here. Number one, when volcanoes erupt, why does lightning come out of the ashes? And that is from the Hayes Brothers. So thank you, Hayes Brothers, for that amazing question. So who would like to answer that? Well, I know the answer to that question, Haley. So uh, this is an interesting concept, Hayes Brothers. So thank you for asking that. So essentially what happens is when uh, this volcano erupts, there's going to be ash. Now, these small ash particles can kind of like rub against each other. What happens is it, it creates an electrical charge because of the force of friction. As they're rubbing against each other, this electrical charge kind of builds up. What happens is some of these particles, when they're in the air, they kind of like float away from each other. So some of these particles are away from each other, which gives the electric charge a chance to kind of jump in between those uh, molecules that are electrically charged, which causes lightning. So it's really cool phenomenon. Wow. Thank you, Katie. That was a wonderful answer. And I'm sure the Hayes brothers appreciated that. Now we have a question for Cole. Oh. Now, <laughs> now, Cole, <laughs> mm -hmm. did you use like the time machine that you keep in your closet, of oh. course. Did you use that one <laughs> to go back and see the volcanic eruption 2.1 uh -huh. million years ago? Or, I was know it <laughs> or was it the one that you keep in the attic? I'm just wondering which one you used. Um, what I am assuming this question is referring to is the time machine <laughs> that Kate and I used. <laughs> oh, so there's a third one. <laughs> well, there's a time machine. <laughs> <laughs> there was a time machine. There was a time machine that Katie, Kobe, and I used to go back <laughs> to the dinosaur age, which I believe we are out of, and we will definitely not yeah, see. We're not going back. <laughs> we are never going back. Uh, last week we went to visit some dinosaurs <laughs> and one dragon, and um, <laughs> it was a wild, wild time. So yes, it was the same time machine um, that I, that we used in the dinosaur oh. episode. Thank you. We got rid of it though. <laughs> we don't want to go back. <laughs> Those dinosaurs are never coming back. Ever. Oh, well, I was going to say, we should use the time <laughs> machine for whatever episode you're on next, Cole. Uh, yes, we will. I believe it is a, a math-themed <laughs> episode, so we will go back to when math was invented. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. I cannot wait. Now, I think we have a couple more questions here. Which volcano causes more damage, a submarine volcano or a normal volcano? And that is from Rhythm, so thank you, Rhythm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so rhythm, uh, that's a great question, and uh, basically what we're thinking is the answer would be a normal volcano, and that's because for submarine volcanoes, uh, the magma that spews up into lava kind of instantly cools because it hits that water, uh, whereas a normal volcano, it's uh, very, very hot. So we would say that it would be a, a normal volcano would cause more uh, damage. Thank you so much for that answer, Katie. I think we're nearing the end here, but... I'm still feeling a little sad about myself, and I think I, I need a little pick-me-up to get me going for the rest of the day. 
Oh, a pick me up, you say? Mm -hmm. Well, I know just the thing. I, Haley, we have uh, explained to you. I just got to stop swinging that around. <laughs> we have explained to you that we, all these different types of volcanoes, you can use an underwater volcano, I think, for your science fair. And just because you and Katie are such great friends, I will give you a slice of cake. Awesome. Oh, perfect. Welcome. Thank you so You're much, welcome. Cole. This was an amazing episode. I learned so much about volcanoes and so much about the earth that I live on and you live on at home. So <laughs> without further ado, I believe we are done with our episode and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.